Hello and welcome to the Disruptability Podcast. Today we're talking to Cork woman Elena Canty, who firmly believes in the power of education. She also describes some of her daily struggles around accessibility, but she still has an incredible zest for life. Thank you for listening. So hello everybody and welcome to the Disruptability Podcast. I am absolutely delighted to welcome Elena Canty today. She is a former student of mine. She is a Cork woman and she is a master's graduate from CIT and she is now a project intern at Event Plan. So hi Elena, how are you? Hi Claire, how are you? I'm really good. good. Delighted that you could join me this morning, Elena. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Good. Elena, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, um, well, you already know my name, but um, Elena is my name. And I I recently finished, uh, completed my master's in public relations at CIT. I spent six years there. Now I'm working um, in event management, but I'm doing the public relations side of it, which I love. Um, I was in College Econ before that, and that's how I know you. Um, Yeah, um, and many moons ago. um, I suppose I I love life. Um, I love to socialize, but I'm really delighted that I had a great education as well Um, and I suppose for those that might not see how obvious it is from this video um, I'm in a wheelchair and so I have um, brittle bone disease um, among other bits but um, yeah so um, my my life has been a road less travelled but I still have achieved regular things I suppose in life uh, that others have as well, like educational system. Okay, um, so the education is really important, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, oh, completely. Yeah, I think it should be for everyone. Um, it depends on what you're interested in, but there's always an education around everything anyway. I think it's so important. Um, and if you just get it done, then, you know, it's done and no one can ever take it away from you. And, you know, once you have it, it's great. You can, you, the world's your oyster then. Absolutely. Elena, do you want to maybe start us off on your early educational career? Where did it all begin? Well, it began in primary school, but um, back in the 90s when my mom was looking around, my mom and dad were looking around for um, primary schools to give, to, to, for me to um, be a, to go into. Um, at the time, they kind of were like, oh, we have no remedial teaching places in this uh, school. And my mom's like, hold on, I just said that she uses a wheelchair, but there's nothing wrong with her, her brain. Um, and they were like, no, 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 you don't understand. We have no remedial teaching um, on board. So she found it very difficult, but she eventually found a lovely primary school for me um, just down the road from where I live. Actually, um, yeah, so it's called um, Scala Lover. It's beautiful um, primary school. And I spent my time there until t- 2004 when I finished. Um, and then I went on to secondary school next door to the primary school in St. Aidan's. Um, I had an amazing PA there. Um, uh, her name was Wenska and she was just everything to me. She was probably the utmost, most positive experience from the whole secondary school experience um but i loved my primary school years um and then after high school um i went on to college come where i met you and i stayed there for three years um and did free tac for the last two years uh free tac level five and six but before free tac was kind of more broadly used in college come the first year I was there, they used, um, it was like Institute of Commercial Management. It was like a British examining body, but they ceased that. So I, I was delighted then to do FITAC, um, which is more recognized, really. I think that's known as QQI now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I was delighted. I, I, I think my mind just completely switched when I went to college. Calm, I realized that I loved education, but um, I, I don't think your secondary school years are an example of whether you love education or not, because they just don't suit everyone. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. So you completed the leaving cert, but it was really only when you went to further education that you realized education can be so broad and you can actually study something you love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I loved it. Um, I loved knowing about different aspects of business, um, particularly the colorful side of business, so PR, marketing, advertising, um, you know, and a bit of management as well. But I, I loved your module as well because it kind of opened your eyes to the wider world and not just the business world. Um, so yeah, you did social studies with us. So that was a lovely module just to get a break from all the business side of it as well. Um, and it's so important now because diversity in the workplace is important. So you you opened your eyes to possibility that there can be diverse society in a workplace which mm -hmm. is great um, and then after college com i um i enrolled for a bachelor in um a bachelor's degree in business administration in 2013 and i spent four years doing that degree i did my honors degree finished up in 2017 i loved it um, i loved my time in cit overall anyway because it's all about the people. There's, it, it, like, yeah, of course, it's very important that you do great and you do very well in your grades, but um, the emphasis is on the person and the welfare of the person um, more often than not. So um, I loved just the atmosphere every day, going down the hallways and seeing people and like, hi, how are you? And they'd know you by name, not just a, uh, an academic statistic you know you you were known and it was a lovely kind of network to be a part of and um, we became like a family for the four years there and I suppose I don't know what kind of possessed me but I, I went to um, a post graduate fair in CIT in 2017 just to kind of have a look around of what my next options would be and as well as companies to get hired from there was also options to further your career, your education. Mm -hmm. So I um, met Emmett Coffey, um, my, now my PR uh, lecturer from the Masters. And yeah, I just got chatting to him and I, 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 I just, I think I just gravitated to that side of business again. So I decided to further my, um, my education and I enrolled for two years to do the Masters in Public Relations with New Media. Um, under Emmett Coffey. Um, so yeah, um, it was a lovely two years. I think it added the icing on the cake, a little cherry on top um, of my overall experience at CIT. And you are soon to graduate from that this Friday, yeah. isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. November. Yeah, so yeah. I'm all yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. And when you say, what did that entail? So it was public relations with the new media. So what's that yeah. about? What did that new entail? Media, I suppose now, we're living in a world that it's no longer just traditional media that you use, so like broadcast um, and newspapers or print media, they, they call it. Uh, so now there's video, which is massive, and we actually had a module dedicated to video. Uh, so we had to create a video, produce it, and it was so cool. Uh, we used Adobe Premiere Pro for that. Um, photography is very important as well because sometimes when you know when you don't need words you just use powerful pictures um and so social media as well kind of just dramatically took over in the last five years i think um mm -hmm. so yeah new media is very important now but there's still um an importance on traditional media so it's very integrated now mm -hmm. um, i think that's why um this course was set up um because if you are to get into a career in communications, you, you need to know how to communicate in different ways, not just traditionally, but in, you know, 
kind of online and stuff so absolutely yeah. and do you feel with all the new technologies and the assistive mm. technologies that this is the game changer for people with disabilities in the workplace yeah, yeah it's probably going to be a lot easier for us maybe because you you can access your technology you know anywhere mm -hmm. so like your your phone and your laptop it's great you can do it virtually anywhere you could be in Guatemala, you can be in Bangladesh, you can be in Spain, the US or in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go to the office, you could be in Starbucks if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so you can be anywhere. It's great. It actually makes room for remote working. It it's, makes it more possible. Okay. So, and yeah. what are you doing at the moment? Are you remote working or do you still go into the office? I'm remote working for now. Yeah, um, because we're working on a project, so um, everything that I'm doing to assist the project, is, it doesn't require me being in the office. Mm -hmm. So I can use my laptop, I can use my phone, um, I, I write press releases, I, um, I get sponsorships, um, and all of them require your laptop and your phone. So I, 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 do, meet, I do meet my boss and my clients, um generally once a week or thereabouts and um, maybe every two weeks or whatever but like we're in constant contact so it's great but no i'm happy to work from home for now and um, i just think it suits me for now yeah, yeah. and it suits I, i'm working from home at the moment remote working and i think it's a, a huge advantage yeah yeah it is it really is because the kettle is right there um, you can go to the bathroom anytime you need to, or you know, it, it's just your own comfort, and you know, and you can choose the hours too. I suppose, you know, you can get up really early if you want to catch up on emails, or you can work on communication tactics at at night. It doesn't really matter, you know. You just be more aware of your hours that you put in, but like, but it, it's it is a lot easier, I think. Yeah. So do you want to tell us about the project you're working on at the moment? Because yeah. I saw your really good video on LinkedIn last night. Thank you. Um, well, um, I, came, I, I came on board at the end of August for this project um, with my boss, um, Margaret O'Regan, um, from Event Plan. And um, it's basically we're going to be organising a benefit concert for uh, the CUH Children's Unit. Um, I'm so excited for it because it, it's close to my heart. I would have spent many years during my childhood there, you know, going there. Um, so at the moment, they want to um, uh, add a new unit to the existing one um, and get new vital equipment as well um, for, you know, to treat the children. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a massive, um, it, it does need a lot of fundraising as a result, um, which is totally understandable. Um, and we're, one of the ways we're trying to do that is to organize this benefit concert in the City Hall next, um, next month, um, so on Saturday, the 16th of November, uh, and it's going to be um, on from half seven. Um, and walking on cars are headlining, and Brave Giant and Stephanie Rainey are um, supporter, supporting. Brilliant. So, and that's on at City Hall in Cork City. Yeah, yeah, City Hall. So it'll be fab. Yeah, yeah. it'll be great. And, and so it's a privilege to be a part of it um, and to help organize it. Um, I'm learning a lot from it as well. It's a great experience for me. Um, I, I, I have um experience with events before but i think because they were more to do with my college projects um this is different ball game altogether it's like industry so i'm really loving it yeah this is real like this is a yeah. great project to be working on and elena i'll make sure i get this um this interview out before yeah. then as well so you know yeah, that people that hear great. about the benefit concert and yeah. anyone could call Anyone can go, any member of the public, if you're interested in walking in cars, Stephanie Rainey or Brave Giant, um, you just log on to 
cuh.cleobookings.com and get your tickets. Or if you can't go on the night, there's an option to donate on that website, cuh.cleobookings.com. So, okay, yeah. for the children's unit in CUH. What a fantastic cause, Elena. And as you say, it's very close to your own heart. Everything comes full circle. I've realized that in the last few months. Um, so yeah, it, it's really cool to give back now and go and attend lesions in CUH without the feeling, oh, this is for a hospital appointment. It's so weird how everything comes full circle. I know so, that you're going in now as a professional, not as a patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still go in as a patient, but like it'd be twice a year maybe. But like, this is more of a professional feeling. So it's nice. Yeah, definitely. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. And yeah. Lena, let's talk a little bit about accessibility in Cork City. Do you have uh, any thoughts on that? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, but I can be quite bitter about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's plenty of uh, obstacles. Um, I, I just think not just the wider society, because people park at the side of footpaths and they are part of the problem, obviously. But I just think it's the infrastructure as well. Um, I always say as well... Um, the architects are my enemy. They are my arch nemesis because they, I just don't, like they, they think they get it, but they don't. And I don't think any, I have yet to see an, an architect who is in a wheelchair who totally gets it. Um, they put in a ramp into, uh, not a ramp. Oh yeah, they could add a ramp out into the building, but then you might not access upstairs. They just put it in for the sake of it. Or they might add um, a rail, a handrail in the bathroom just to make it look like it's a wheelchair accessible bathroom, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. What sometimes affects you is the size of the bathroom, isn't it? Because you're yeah. in an electronic. It's not big enough. Yeah, yeah. But it should be big enough for everyone. I, I just don't think, like, you know, I think they need to be proactive because you can't just wait until there's a problem popping up. Like, I think there's too many of that now. I think it's gone to a point now where they should just be proactive. Um, there's too many people out there with acquired disabilities now as well, not just people who are born with the physical disability. So really it's in everyone's best interest because no one knows what happens, or what could happen tomorrow. So anyone could end up in that situation like me, where they're like, oh shit, I really need accessible place to go out dining or go out clubbing or, you know, anywhere. Yeah. Like You're dead right. And I mean, I think I it's uh, the, ma the majority yeah. of disabilities are acquired between the ages of 18 and 65 when people are at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's scary. Um, like you just don't know. You, you know, every day is a blessing, really, and you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, but I just feel like because you have to plan everything, um, like I, I don't, I, I don't see myself as disabled as such unless I'm having a bad day with my health or whatever. It's the environment around me that makes me feel disabled. Um, very simple things like doors that aren't accessible um if they're too heavy or they're not automatic coming in as you enter the building and um, the the bathroom as i said um uh, pathways where you come to some stop and there's no ramp like a dish to get mm. off um uh, yeah and then lifts as well if they're not working uh, which was one of my recent experiences um yeah a bit traumatic so um had to get the fire brigade but anyway um were you yeah. in were you in the lift no but i couldn't get out of the building oh so okay. yeah pretty much had to get the fire brigade to get me out of the building so that was um hilariously traumatic uh yeah, yeah it only happened last week so it's very it still feels raw i suppose yeah but um and I that's just that's the word, isn't it, Elena? It can be very raw, and you, you know, everyone yeah. might be saying, "Oh, yeah. exclusive," 
and then you can't participate because actually yeah. it's not inclusive. The font isn't yeah. big enough, the lift doesn't work, the ramp is yeah. in the wrong place, and it's raw because you're like, yeah. stop telling me it's inclusive when it's not. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, completely. And they were lovely, the fire brigade um, gentlemen. They were really nice. Um, so thankfully they, they kind of um, rescued me to safety, but I just won't be going back into that building again, so. Um, which is a pity, but there uh, were no love lost. There's plenty of other places around town. So, uh, like Deep South is fabulous, um, and Electric is good. So, like, there's, uh, but that saying that again, you have to plan everything. Like, there's not everywhere in town I could go into um, to attend an event or to attend to go to meet up with someone, you know. So, and if we're meeting you for a drink, yeah. We need to really think about which premises yeah. we're going to be going to. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a lot of the time I can just think up the top of my hat, but then it depends on preferences. Everyone, like if you, if I suggest a deep south, you might not have an interest in deep south. So then we have to go somewhere maybe that we both be interested in and then trying to filter that again with the places that are accessible. That are accessible. Uh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Like, like you might just never you know ever go inside there because of the inaccessibility so yeah i suppose it's a challenge it's a it's an undue stress challenge you really you shouldn't have to deal with it really at this day and age anyway i, yeah, I believe in 2019 i agree do you use the bus system i do um i've only ever had three disasters with it but i suppose tree is too much um as well at the same time where the the ramp that flips out wasn't working so but thankfully i was on the other side of the bus not inside the bus because imagine if that happened that would be a disaster as well um but no i i it's that i couldn't get into the bus because the the, the ramp didn't couldn't flip out um that happened three times but more often than not, I have a pleasant experience with the bus. I get the seven bus, the number seven, and all the drivers are lovely. They're really kind. Um, no, I, I have a genuinely positive experience with the bus, and I love it because I feel free. It's like, you know, taking the bus like everyone else, but I have yeah. a bus pass, so <laughs> I don't have to um, pay the regular fee, but still, I like being there with everyone, and we're all going the same way, and shopping or meeting up with someone and it's nice it's lovely yeah thing. getting into town on the bus it's great yeah yeah i know a lot of people know about the bus but i actually like it well oh. i get the bus a lot as well and um and i know all the bus drivers on the 208 and the 205 and they're all fantastic the only thing i'd say is and um, do you use that bus app um real-time bus airing no do you ever use that no, I didn't know it existed. I know there's a bus there in website, but never yeah. knew the, uh, So you can an get app. an app on your phone and it'll tell you when the next bus is coming. And sometimes what I find is I think I'm living in the Bermuda Triangle in Cork because it might say, oh, the bus is coming in four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, it's one minute, and then it doesn't come. It disappears. No, and actually it came up um, on Twitter yesterday. Um, uh, that my pre the president of CIT actually um, was interviewed in an article um, from the Echo, and um, he was saying that like if, if you live say in Nakhnehini or somewhere in the north side, and you're trying to get to CIT, it takes an hour and a half. Like it's crazy at this day and age. And he was saying that it needs to be improved. Like if I was to get the bus now and I still studied in CIT. I have to get the number seven and then the number five, but you, you'd want to give yourself an hour and a half. And if I have a nine o'clock lecture, I'd have to leave here at seven probably, but I don't even know if the bosses run at seven, do you know? So I think they do, but I, I'm glad he is highlighting that now because uh, public true. transport really needs to up its game. And yeah. the bus drivers are fantastic and they're all very kind, yeah. but, there needs to be more of them and they need to run more frequently. We need audio feedback. So you need to know when the next stop 
is, especially mm. for people who are vision impaired or for people tourists. At the bus and stop, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because we want everyone using the public transport system. I mean, one, it's good for climate change, and two, it's good for That's people with disabilities and students and elderly people and just get out of the cars and use the buses. Yeah, and if it's more frequent, like you said, um, they wouldn't be as crammed. Like, because there's certain times of the day now, I would try, if I can, avoid the bus. Like, five o'clock, four o'clock. Like, I'm pretty much crammed because everyone's either standing or sitting. The whole place is jammers. Um, so I try to avoid certain times of the day for the bus because I know it'll be rush hour. But if it was more frequent, if there was another number seven bus coming in 10 minutes rather than another half hour, you know, it would lessen the load. The, it would be more, you know, spacious for me, less less daunting as well. Because if people are right there up next to you, it's kind of intimidation, but they have nowhere else to, they have no choice either. <laughs> yeah, they have no choice. Or what happens sometimes when the bus is um, full, the bus passes you by. Yeah, 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 At yeah. At certain and times of the day, especially yeah. on Fridays. Yeah, oh my God, yeah, the struggle is real. But like that now, I do try to avoid that situation. So, um, but yeah, it, you shouldn't have to. You should just be able to grab it whenever you need to. But yeah, um, I suppose it, it's a positive experience for me, but there have been moments like where you're kind of feeling a bit, um, you feel a bit vulnerable. Yes. But... Yeah. Uh, if it's more frequent, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Elena, you are busy working at the moment. And I suppose my one of my final questions to you is, yeah. have you any advice for employers if they are yeah. thinking or they want to um, hire a disability? What yes. do they need to think about? Well, first of all, they need to just hire them anyway and just have it in their mindset because if they're kind of, if they're not in the mindset, I suppose, at all, they're never going to think about the environment around them anyway. So um, knowing that there's talent out there with people with disabilities is the first thing. Um, and then depending on the talent they get in, um, they'd need to check the environment. But I think they should just have the environment completely accessible for all um for all people with disabilities such as for me anyway because i have a physical disability it'd be the ergonomics that would need to be um changed up um like certain things now like the coffee station um even in cit i found that difficult or if you're in a cafe the coffee station is always inaccessible as well so like trying to reach for the stirrer the cup for the tea or for the milk it's just the struggle is real you're trying to reach in but everything is up against the wall and then there's this massive big table platform in front of you but so you can't get in under mm. um, and so I'll be at the edge I mean surely there'd be some room somewhere to put your cup or whatever like there's other ways around it um but yeah, that would be my big struggle. Um, and bathrooms, of course, in the workplace, um, most of them would be small, unless it's a maybe multinational. They might have quite maybe more accessible bathrooms, but it's the whole idea, again, that if you just put in a handrail, that it, you would assume that it's accessible. But I think they need to see that it's the size but then again, they're only going by what's recommended. And unfortunately, um, you know, the Disability Act probably just doesn't recommend it big enough, is what okay. my main issue would be. Document um, M, yeah, the building regulations, and that's document yeah. M, which uh, gives all the sizes of what a room should be, et cetera, or what a yeah, doorway really should be. Requirements, I think, but they should be maximized more, uh, definitely. Um, and I suppose. Well, there's realistic things to think about too, I suppose. You're not going to, well, up until a certain point, point, because there's this idea of disclosure as well when you're applying for a job. So obviously it's only up until the point of 
interview that you might feel the need to disclose or it's very obvious if you're in the wheelchair um but you know if it's a building that's up steps you're not going to maybe go in for the job or maybe they'd suggest a different way like you'd remote work but um i suppose there's realistic aspects to it as well Mm -hmm. um and then of course um you know the ergonomics in the workplace in the your work office as well so you know having everything near to you you know like um the bin not completely underneath the table just kind of next to you and like having drawers that are accessible for you and you know everything kind of closer rather than at the back and stuff but um, I, I'm sure that if you know the potential em- employee communicates I suppose that's that's the main thing as well that I would um, recommend is open and transparent communication between both the employer and the employee just because you know we all have different needs anyway so that's what I would mainly I uh, recommend is that just communication and openness um, if you were to go into the workplace because that's what I have at the moment anyway with my job is just always making sure that I'm communicating how I feel or just being transparent and open about anything. So, Elena, that is such good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's awareness, isn't it? Because I think most employers want to get it right but they're not sure or maybe there's fear yeah well then that's where you come in because you give great advice on that so hopefully you'll completely change the world <laughs> of work. Um, i'm trying anyway elena i'm yeah, trying yeah but i do i do training all around that idea of disability yeah. awareness you know yeah yeah because that's the first step like you know they they need all this advice but they need to first of all have the mindset in them first otherwise they never make the changes they need to have it in the head that oh yeah show how about somebody who's you know diverse you know in the workplace who has a different ability yeah 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 yeah, yeah. just to make the place a diverse workplace first of all so if they've that no mindset they can achieve anything Really? I, I agree. Yeah. And you know what? It's confidence as well. I try and give employers confidence around it because I'm like, look, it's not as difficult as you think. Like we're real people. Look at Elena. Look at me. We're, you know, there's a lot more to us than our disability. Yeah. And I, I read somewhere that there's grants as well, depending on if you're a private organization or whatever, you might get a grant to refurbish some part of the work, work office as well if they needed to uh, absolutely right? yeah and um i suppose if there's any employers listening to it uh season one episode one with dermot crosby of the disruptability podcast he goes through all those grants so there's yeah. like um a work That's equipment good. adaptation grant and there's you know all kinds of grants for yeah. adapting buildings etc yeah 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 so definitely um i think they should take that on board too and like obviously if you're not a multinational corporation, you're not going to have all the resources available to you. So this is where that grant would come in, you know, and they could make the bathroom more accessible, add a rampway into the building, even a lift. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true for small or medium enterprises. They, they yeah. need those supports. They do. Yeah, yeah. And then we would greatly appreciate that then because we know they're making the effort um we we know that they want us maybe as well it kind of shows as well and i think actions speak louder than words as well so uh yeah well, that's so, very true yeah, yeah yeah and as they say um you know one in seven might have a disability but one in three of us love someone with a disability so like 50 yeah. percent nearly of the population wants or loves someone with a disability to get a mm. job you know or to be included in the restaurant or the hotel or the bar or wherever so yeah it, we're clients we're customers we've got money to spend in england they call it the purple pound you know well we've got the purple okay. euro in ireland so let's spend yeah. it but everyone is in the same boat we all just want to get on with our lives and 
do whatever we want to socialize and work and you know pay our way and make a living most of us do anyway you know i think always the people that might find difficulties and obstacles and challenges are the ones that want to have a good life and work they're always the ones i think that are passionate so that's why it's good to get more talent in because there's massive enthusiasm and passion from you know from talent of people who have a disability i think anyway yeah um, i agree yeah. because we're very resilient yes. and adaptive and yeah we are we're totally resilient and do you know i suppose we have creative ideas because we think of the world in a different way maybe as well i feel anyway and because of our um road less traveled we have different experiences um, and we can just offer a different perspective to the table as well. So it's really important. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. words. Good wisdom. Great wisdom, Elena Canty <laughs> from Cork. Yeah. Come here. We'll finish it up this morning. And as always, it's great talking to you. Thank you so much, Claire. I'm delighted now to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you sure. are. I mean, we've been talking about doing this for a while and you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do it, we'll do it. So we finally done it, Elena. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I wish you all luck um, um, in your venture as well. And I'll be, you know, waving you on and yeah, yeah. And anything you need as well. Um, and likewise, fun. likewise, girl. All right, we'll see you soon. And um, yeah. good luck with your event planning in for CUH. Yeah, right. thank you, Claire. It would be you. fantastic. All right. Yeah. When, when was it again? November 16th, City Hall. Saturday, November 16th, uh, 7.30 for the doors opening. And yeah, yeah, Cork City Hall, Walking on Cars, Wave Giant and Stephanie Rainey. So it'd yeah. be awesome. It's yeah, be a great yeah. night. Thanks, Anyone? Elena. Yeah, thanks, Emil. Thanks, Talk Claire. Soon. All right, bye. bye. Please be advised that this recording does not constitute medical or legal advice.